and starting with sheep. First of all, I want to apologize if you can hear a bit of wind outside. It is quite windy here today, so I will try and shout. Today I want to go through with you about caring for your ewes during pregnancy. What you do five months earlier has a huge bearing on your lambing season. So we'll go through the care that you'll need to give them. First of all, you need to think about a few things before you actually put your ewes in with your rams. You need to think about three things, teeth, teats, and toes. If a ewe's got bad teeth, it's not gonna be able to give the nutrition to the lamb inside her. So if you've got a ewe with very bad teeth, it may be worth culling her or just not putting her in lamb. Toes are another thing you have to think about. If you've got a ewe that's often lame or she struggles on her feet, there's a few things she's not gonna be able to do. She's gonna to struggle to stand for the ram for a start. And also, if she still keeps getting bad feet, she's gonna to struggle to stand up and feed her lambs. So it's always worth making sure that they've got good feet before you put them in with the ram. And the last thing is teats, and this is really important. Before you put your ewes in with your ram, check their udders. If you've got a ewe with hard, lumpy udder, the chances are she's had mastitis and she's lost the use of that half of the udder, or maybe both sides. The last thing you wanna do is put a ewe in lamb. She's expecting twins and then she can't feed them both. So do have a good look at the udders and don't use anything that's had mastitis. Once your ewes have been tucked or mated with the ram, you haven't really got a huge amount to do. As long as they've got some good grass when they're being in with the ram, that's all you really need to worry about at this time. The next thing you need to think about is you want to know how many lambs or even if your ewes are actually in lamb. So between 75 and 80 days you'll, from the ram going in, you will need to get them scanned if you wish. I always get mine scanned because I like to know how many they're having and it also helps with the feeding regime later on in pregnancy. One of the things that you will need to do with all your pregnant ewes is check them regularly. Now, ewes can get on their backs and if they get on their backs, they can die if they're there long enough. You'll see a clip in a minute of one of mine on her back down the field early one morning. They're also, when they're on their back, they are um, a haven for predators. Crows can peck their udders, foxes can get at them. So really and truly, you need to be checking them two or three times a day. I actually check mine four times a day. The reason for that is they're very heavy, they've got a lot of wool, and they do get stuck on their back. So, you know, they do need to be checked. And also just to make sure that they're eating properly, that you've got them all coming to the trough, that they're not unwell. And if they are unwell, you need to bring those ones in just out of the elements. I lamb in January, so in their late stages of pregnancy, I'm in the midst of winter. I've come down the field this morning, and this old girl, she's on her back. Um, this is the reason why I check my sheep now while they're heavily pregnant four times a day. She'll be okay, she just can't get up. So, just watch. I'm just going to get her roller. You probably can't see that. Roll her back over and she'll go and find the others. But if you left, if they're left there too long, they will die. About six weeks before your ewes are due to lamb, you'll need to start feeding them. Now, that's not right for all breeds of sheep. Some of the commercial breeds literally don't need any feed up to birth. They manage quite well on grass. I keep a pedigree flock, so therefore they do need some feeding. And my feed regime is one pound of food per life they're carrying. So if her ewe is having twins, I make sure she gets two pound of food per day. And in the very light, late stages of pregnancy, I divide that feed into two feeds. 
As I said earlier, about six weeks before lambing, you need to start feeding your lambs. But as well as that, I also put out lifeline buckets, which I showed you in an earlier video. Now the lifeline buckets are mineral buckets and they give the ewes minerals and vitamins that they need for in their last stages of pregnancy. Don't be alarmed if coming up to the lambing time that your ewes look like they're getting uh, a bit thinner, they're losing a bit of weight. That's quite normal. Um, that's because the lambs are growing inside her and they're taking everything from her. So don't be alarmed, but just do make sure that they keep eating. If a ewe gets very, very thin, then it's worth getting your vet to come and see her. The other thing to look out for in late stages of pregnancy is twin lamb disease. Now, twin lamb disease is a disease like pregnancy diabetes, and it's where they have lack of energy and they need a boost to be able to get up and feeding again. A ewe that's in her late stages of pregnancy that doesn't eat um, will not be giving the lambs inside her the nutrition they need to grow. So do make sure that you feed your ewes and that they have ad lib hay and plenty of water. Now about a week before my first lamb is due, I actually get mine in. As I said in an earlier video, I choose to lamb inside. Once they're inside, I dag them up ready for lambing and that way I can see their back end well. You don't need to dag all sheep up. I've got very woolly sheep, so I like to dag them up so I can see what's going on and it makes it a bit more hygienic when it comes to lambing time. These girls behind me now are actually due in the next week. So, like I said earlier, I'm feeding them twice a day. I'm not overfeeding them. The lambs that have already been born are a normal size. Um, if you overfeed your ewes, you're actually causing yourself as many problems as if you underfeed them. You're gonna end up with big lambs and then you're gonna have birthing problems. The only answer for big lambs to come out is often through a caesarean section. If I've ever had to have a caesarean section on one of my ewes, I don't actually put her back in lamb. So some of the decisions you make are gonna give them the best lambing that they can have. So make sure that you're feeding them regularly. Like I said, two feeds later on in pregnancy. That's because it makes them not so full so quickly and it doesn't make them so uncomfortable. During their pregnancy, I tend not to want to do anything that I don't need to do with my ewes. So I try to make sure their feet are in good condition before they get pregnant because I don't really want to be tipping them up unnecessarily to trim feet and what have you. I also shear before they go to the ram. Some farmers will shear as they bring them in for lambing I tend to shear after they've lambed. So it's, it's down to your individual preference and what you decide to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's not been a long one, but I hope it's given you a guide of how to look after your ewes. Like I said earlier, if you look after your ewes well, they'll do you well for lambing. And hopefully you'll have a great lambing season. So happy sheep keeping. See you next time.